part of, because let me tell you how the conversation changes when we elect Democrats up and down that ballot this November 6th. We're not going to be talking about whether or not it's a worthwhile investment to provide families with access to affordable health care. We're not going to talk about life and death as though it's a matter of simple costs and benefits. We're not, because we know that a sick child in 2018 deserves to go to the doctor full stop. We know that 63 counties without a pediatrician, 79 counties without an OBGYN, and six rural hospitals closed in the last five years alone isn't good enough for our future or for our people. when the Republicans who presided over that problem for the last 12 years with majorities in both houses of our state legislature and every single statewide executive office go out on the road and in a campaign rhetoric form tell us, hey, we're going to fix rural health care. And I say, you know, y'all know you've been in the majority for like 12 years, right? <laughs> what the heck have you been doing? It's not like you didn't know the problem needed fixing. No, you knew. You just didn't think it was important. And now that y'all are going to get beat, you're talking about rural health care. And we're not going to stand for it. Because we're going to get to the ballot boxes. That's how the conversation changes when you elect Democrats. You know what else happens when we elect Democrats? We fully fund every public school in this state, not just for children. equalizer of opportunity. Public school is how this girl from a little town in the Ozarks went all the way to Harvard and is standing on this stage as your next new I'm the granddaughter of a teacher for more than 20 years. I am the daughter-in-law of a teacher. I am a proud public school graduate and I am now the proud public school parent to two little girls. One who will be a second grader this coming year, and the other one starts kindergarten on August 1st. And any one of us who sends our kids to those public schools knows that they need to be focused on realizing their God-given potential, not cowering in a corner somewhere in an active shooter drill. Those kids deserve to be safe, they deserve to be educated, and they deserve Republicans is they managed to finally fund our schools for the first time since 2002. And God bless them, they did it, and that's a good first step. But you know what? My kids are going to need fully funded public schools for a hell of a lot longer than 12 months in an election year. That's how we change the conversation. We're going to invest in infrastructure because when I go up to Habersham County and I meet families who tell me they're driving their teenage high school students to the McDonald's parking lot so they can get Wi-Fi to do their homework, I see a failure of leadership. Not an unsolvable problem, but a straight-up failure of leadership in this state. We cannot lead a 21st century economy. We cannot produce a 21st century workforce, the kind that will bring jobs to this county and companies to this county. We can't do that if we don't make 21st century investments in education for our people. is we know. We know that it shouldn't matter what you look like or where you come from or how much money your folks have or who you love or how or if you pray. The great thing about being an American is no matter where you start with a lot of hard work and a little bit of luck, you can go anywhere in this country. <laughs> Protecting that access to the American dream is the thing that brings me into this race. Uh, when I was six years old, my family relocated to Joplin, Missouri, so that my dad, my folks grew up pretty poor, my dad could run a business for a very wealthy family. And he did a great job. He grew that little company from about a million in revenue to over 60 million. He got a plaque from the governor and everything. And in fact, he did such a good job, one of the sons of that wealthy family decided they wanted to run the business. And my dad got fired. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I was 11 years old. And my folks took me and my two sisters to the park behind the McDonald's off of Main Street in Joplin. And they said, girls, it's going to be hard. 
your dad lost his job. But we're going to be fine, and I just need you guys to believe in us. I not only believed in my parents that day, I'm grateful for what they taught me in that moment. They taught me the power of resilience. They taught me that we can rely on our friends and our communities. And more importantly, they taught me that when I had the opportunity to run a business or to serve an office, I was going to do it differently. And in fact, I have, because I developed a deep, deep respect for the dignity of working families. You know, it's a funny thing about having to have your friends and neighbors buy milk for your family. It'll teach you what it's like and the obligation we have to not only move forward, but to reach back and give a hand up to those. So in 2008, we had the opportunity to buy a struggling car haul company that moves automobiles for the big car makers like GM and Ford. It was 120 employees, mostly Teamster, the beginning of the economic collapse, and everybody said this company wasn't safe that those jobs weren't savable and candidly that we'd all go down trying. But in my family, we don't believe in unsolvable problems. We believe that leaders sometimes are unwilling or unable to solve them, but fundamentally I've never met a problem we couldn't fix. So we not only survived the Great Recession, the economic collapse, the General Motors and Chrysler bankruptcies, today we are the largest company of our kind on this continent. We have over 3,500 employees and every one of them gets fully funded health insurance for them and their families. behind the McDonald's and I remember them to this day and every decision I've made as a business owner and as a leader and as a parent and as a human being I think about in terms of whether or not some other family in some other park is having that same conversation that's who we are as Democrats the true belief in helping our neighbors in bearing one another's burdens and in the infinite potential of this country and its people because the funny thing is somewhere along the way the Republicans lost that you can't be the party of life when you celebrate instruments of death. You can't be the party of Lincoln if you leave the work of the civil rights movement unfinished right here in your own backyard. You can't be the party of business and strip away tax credits from Georgia's largest private employer because of a tussle over the NRA. That's right. But the great thing is, this November 6th, every one of you will get a chance to tell them how you feel about that. Every one of you. So I need you to leave here deputized today. You're now all officially campaign team members for every one of these candidates. But it's not enough for you to leave feeling motivated to go to the ballot box. I need you to talk politics. I know we're not supposed to talk politics and religion. I have never lived by that rule, and I'm not going to start now. <laughs> I need you to talk to your friends, to your family, to your neighbors, to your colleague. I want you to get the person in the grocery store line behind you and tell them what's at stake this year. Tell them that the entire world is watching Georgia, not just to see if we make history, but if we build a future that's worthy of our children. That's what's on your ballot. So join us. Join us in voting for John and Treva and Lisa and Fred and Stacy and one of those Democrats, there's not a single one of them I'm not proud to be on that ballot with. But with your help, we will not only turn Georgia blue, we will turn it toward a future that is brighter than our grandparents could have ever imagined and leave it to our kids better off than it was when we found it. That is